The other day I was reading through this nutrition book, as I often do, also, and it mentioned that anthropologists are speculating that the earliest man was eating around 100 to 150 grams of fiber per day. Just put this into perspective. The average American is eating about, you know, like 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day. Which, you know, if we start to think about why everyone has bowel issues, it's starting to make a lot of sense. I definitely am not eating 100 grams of fiber. I'm actually pretty close. I don't count calories, as you guys know. I'm actually pretty close when I did, you know, just look to see a rough estimate of where I was at. And I believe I was at, like, eh, 60 or so. I wanted to challenge myself today to increase my fiber intake to at least 100 grams of fiber. <sighs> just to see what it looks like. Just to see what it feels like and just to see what happens. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking you throughout my entire day to eat 100 grams or more of fiber. So some ground rules. First of all, since there's going to be a lot more fiber, I'm definitely going to be increasing my water intake. You don't want to increase fiber without also increasing water. Second, I'm going to be making sure I'm walking a lot more than I typically do. I already walk a lot, that's just something I do, but I'm going to be walking even more just to, you know, keep my intestines moving. <laughs> Plus with walking, it keeps cortisol levels down, so it's really great for my anxiety, but because it's keeping cortisol levels down, it helps to keep your body out of that state of fight or flight so your GI tract can move, and that's what we want. And then the third thing, so I'm putting together the most fiber-rich foods, and it's all coming from real food. I'm not taking supplements here to in order to get to that 100 grams, I'm only getting it from food. With that in mind, you're going to see that most, if not all, of these foods are going to be either cooked or blended in order to help speed up this digestion process so that I don't feel super uncomfortable. And I already worked out this morning. First things first is coffee. Water. For my smoothie base, high fiber, smoothie base. This is actually the easiest way to get a lot of fiber. Weirdly enough, you know, just lettuce and other greens don't have as much fiber as you would think. So I'm going to be really loading up with fibers in various forms of nuts and seeds in the smoothie. I'm gonna be using the last bit of my homemade coconut milk, about 10 or 12 ounces. And I usually never measure things just because like, I don't. I'm going to today just because I wanna be pretty accurate on how much fiber I'm getting. The dog is really, really trying to play with me right now. <laughs> So, use some collagen in here. Yeah. Now comes the fiber. Just how much I measure things, it took me like a while to find this just now. A tablespoon of chia seeds. Getting a half frozen banana. And these will actually have a little bit more fiber. This will actually have a little bit more fiber if you freeze it when it's not totally ripe, which is what I do. It'll have more resistant fiber, and that's what the gut bacteria likes to feed on, so it's perfect. Did I already put the chia seeds in? No. Wait, did I? No. A tablespoon. A tablespoon of flax seeds. Another seed here. The seeds, again, are super high in fiber and um, protein, and also different types of fat, so it's going to get all three of those that are going to keep you satiated anyway. Half a cup of blueberries. You know what, this is where I'm gonna eyeball it because this looks like about a half cup and I really don't want to have to measure. And then clean up another thing, so that's, that looks good. Ooh, almond butter. My birthday is actually, will have already happened by the time this goes live. But I had my birthday party this last weekend and one of my friends owns, her family owns a um, olive oil and almond farm. They're like super Italian, which is awesome. She brought me over some almond butter from them. I'm super excited to try this out. Oh. Andriana, thank you. Two tablespoons. Again, another source of fiber, vitamin E, protein, fat, all the things that we want in a smoothie. And then two Brazil nuts. It's actually pretty similar to what I normally have. Guess I didn't blend it well enough. Uh, is it gonna be perfect? Ooh, wow, that couldn't have been more perfect. Man, oh, this is all almond buttery. Now I have to wash it before I can use it. This is why I don't like measuring things. About an ounce of cacao is about a little over three tablespoons. This is so good. Cacao has an insane amount of fiber in it. An ounce has about nine grams of fiber. This is where I'm gonna get a lot of my fiber. Mm, this is like my new favorite smoothie. This is so good. I didn't think that I could like a smoothie without coconut butter. <laughs> this is really good. I'm gonna put the whole recipe down in the description so you guys can make this if you want. In fact, I'll have like everything from today written down so that you guys can make what I'm making today. I had this all written down the other day on this thing. Total, I know that this all amounts to be 100 grams of fiber. This 
smoothie has about 30. I'll put it up like right here. Cheers to first meal, first fiber packed meal. Tastes good. We're wild into this video now. If you're wondering why we should be having fiber, like isn't that just for your grandpa to make him like go to the bathroom? Actually something a lot of us need it and most of us aren't getting enough of. Fiber is actually fermented by the bacteria that's in your colon. Produces a lot of short chain fatty acids, but specifically it produces butyrate or butyric acid. That's a great anti-inflammatory. Really great for de just decreasing inflammation in the gut. Butyrate is also needed to produce BDN Brain drive neurotropic factor, BDNF, and that's really to boost your cognitive function, to decrease risks of things like Alzheimer's. So we need to make sure that we're having fiber every day. Plus, just the good old thing that fiber says helps keep you regular as long as you're having water and moving and not stressed as well, which I have videos all on that. Cheers to fiber, the unsung hero. It is four o'clock right now, and I mean, to be fair, I did eat my break fast a little bit later than I normally would, but I'm still feeling pretty full. Like I, it's like that edge point where I could start to feel hungry, but I'm still pretty full. Normally I would have three meals, but today I think what I'm going to do um, is just have two meals. We'll see how this goes because I still have quite a bit of fiber that I have to take in. So I'm not sure. Okay, well, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. I'm gonna go on another long walk ah, with Sophie and see if that helps to stimulate my appetite and then just start to eat dinner. I still have like 70 grams of fiber to get in, which is why I'm deciding to split this up into a second meal and like a dessert. So a healthy dessert, you'll see what I'm going for here. This is what I have going for me right now. I really just chose the highest fiber foods. I'm calculating it right now. And even with all of this, I'm still at 97.5, so I need to figure out how to fit in 2.5 more grams of fiber. I'm gonna figure that out and get started with cooking. For this meal, I'm really combining what I had planned for lunch and dinner. I'm making a split pea soup, so split peas are really high in fiber and a great source of uh, plant-based protein, so that's awesome. I'm making a whole artichoke for myself. That's actually really high in fiber as well. Just that one artichoke is about almost 13 grams of fiber, so that's pretty insane. Getting some kale in, which really isn't that much fiber. I sauteed Brussels sprouts, getting cooking everything so I can actually get this food in my system. And then for like dessert, I'm going to make a chia pudding. So again, chia seed, and then about a cup and a half of raspberries. Raspberries also a really great source of fiber. 12 grams of fiber for that one and a half cups. So it's a really great source. Plus it's lower in sugar. Then about an ounce of chocolate, just with the uh, cacao nibs. Chocolate's a really great source of fiber and it'll just even out, make this more of a dessert. Doo -doo -doo. Oh yes, I also have avocado, which, oh my gosh, avocado, such a sneaky source source of fiber. One full avocado has about nine grams of fiber. With half of a sweet potato, I can get just shy of what I need. I'm at 99.4 grams. So I think I'll just sprinkle on an extra week cacao, cacao. Cacao nibs on my dessert. I'm going to make some food now. completed product, full artichoke, the whole sauteed mixture of kale, Brussels sprouts, snap peas, avocado, the soup I made with the split peas and the sweet potato and leeks. And then this is going to be the dessert along with the chia seed pudding that I also have made. I'm going to top it once it's done soaking. So this is technically my second meal, but I'm going to be splitting this up into like a breakfast, dinner and dessert, even though this isn't like you know, a crazy dessert. You know, just splitting it up that way instead for today since I, I did accidentally break my fast a little too late today, uh, at least compared to my normal eating schedule. So I'm gonna eat this, um, end with the dessert of my raspberries with chocolate and the chia pudding, and we'll see how I feel. Do recap it then. <sighs> So finishing up the dessert, I definitely didn't finish that. The soup portion, I had about half of it, maybe like three quarters, couldn't finish it. I waited about an hour until I had the dessert. Soup was probably a bad call. I always get really, really full on soup. I'm probably maybe five to seven grams short just because I couldn't finish the soup. I mean, I feel full, not like icky full if that makes sense. And I don't think I would be able to hit 100 grams every day, but if I were to space it out properly, I probably could have hit 100 grams. The real question is, do you need to be getting 100 grams of fiber in every day? Just from eating a wide assortment of really high fiber foods, I actually hit all of the minerals and micronutrients that I need for a day, including the vitamins as well, other than vitamin D, but you know, just go outside. But do you need to get to 100 grams? I mean, no, but in all reality, you probably need to increase your fiber intake, just everyone in general. I mean, I have one client who's a type two diabetic 
and he saw a massive decrease in his fasting blood glucose level just by increasing his daily fiber intake by 10 grams. So he went from 25 grams to about 35, 36 grams and his fasting blood glucose level went so much lower in a positive direction. The increased fiber helps to decrease inflammation, helps with the gut, helps with brain function. There's so much that goes beyond just, you know, like taking psyllium husk. <laughs> I also want to show that it's possible to do this with food. I mean, this is really similar to my normal diet, so it wasn't that far off. Really, I was just eating a lot more food, which is saying a lot for me because I do tend to eat a lot anyway. But contrary to what a lot of people were asking me about on Instagram when I mentioned this whole challenge I was doing, it's not like it stops you up. People's concerns were that it's going to cause constipation, but actually when you have a good combination of soluble, insoluble fibers and water, like I talked about, and you're moving and you're implementing the de-stressing factors that I always talk about, that's going to make it so your GI tract is moving along anyway. And the fiber really is an important part of stimulating your GI tract as well. It's just when you start to use supplements, that's where you can get into some problems on using the proper amount of fiber. So if you get it from food, you really can't go wrong. Just with my smoothie, I think that was like 25 grams of fiber. Even if you can implement the smoothie portion, which is also very similar to a lot of the smoothies that you use in the complete intermittent fasting bundle, then you're going to be getting at least 25 to 30 grams just from your first meal. So that's a huge step beyond the 10 to 15 grams that the average American is getting. I did talk a lot about walking. I walked a lot today. So I highly recommend that you check out this video next on how you can implement walking in order to tap in your fat burning mechanisms and stimulate your GI tract and even decrease anxiety. Also, if you love the science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, I'm gonna go finish this these last few bites and I'll see you in my next video.